Hello and welcome to my latest video. This is not a project as such. Um, I wanted to make a comparison video between two different ways of etching blades or etching tools um, in order to put in your touch mark or your logo or anything like that or even possibly an inscription. Now I've watched several videos on, on, on this subject and a very popular way of doing this among many people I've seen on YouTube is using a system called, I think it's Etchomatic or Etchograph or something. Anyway, I will, I will look that up. And it's a system that involves um, a sort of UV light, a uh, special transfer film and several chemicals to develop the transfer and to stabilize it, etc. Now I'm sure it's really good. Um, the initial setup is quite expensive and it's quite a lot of processes. So this is not a full comparative test because I haven't got one of those. But the other two most popular ways I've seen is using vinyl transfers or using a thing like this, which is the Brother label printer, which is able to print on transfer tape, which they make. This is the Cricut Maker. This is a vinyl cutter and it is um, a, an incredibly impressive machine. It is far more expensive than this one. Um, the Brother uh, retails for about £70 sterling on, um, on Amazon and uh, the tapes I think are £15 for the rolls of tape and a Cricut Maker is uh costs about well new it costs about 350 pounds for the full set and there are lots of accessories you can buy etc etc so there is a big difference i was again lucky i got this one brand new and boxed in an auction so i didn't pay anything like that but still well over twice what that one cost so let me explain some of the main differences so let me start with the Cricut. This is basically a CNC machine. <laughs> it's, it's extraordinary technology, really. There is specialized software that you can use on a tablet or on a computer or a laptop. And it has its own design software. You can design what you want to do and then transfer it, it by Bluetooth to this printer. You load a, um, the, the vinyl or whatever material you, you want through here. And here is an incredibly sharp blade. Uh, I'll, I'll do a close up on it. And this is what cuts the materials. You can also put another attachment in there for other purposes. Now this video is not a how to, how -to video. There are lots of those on, online. Um, I, and also, I don't know what your computer might be or what your system might be or what you want to do with it. But needless to say, it can cut an extraordinary number of materials from paper right up to leather. Um, amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, you can also get extra deep blades for extra deep materials. Uh, a lot of people start businesses just using this Cricut to make uh, t-shirt transfers, um, decorate mugs and ceramics and blah, 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 whatnot. So it's a very, very powerful machine. Okay, so this is the Brother uh, uh, P-Touch P70. It's basically a label printer. Um, people use them for um, making labels for, for their shops, for products, for all kinds of things, right? And it takes this uh, 24 millimeter tape this particular cartridge is, as it says here, upside down stencil tape, which is incredibly useful. Um, it's super simple to use. Um, it creates a stencil, which again, I'll show you in a second. And uh, it's economical, it's quick, it's simple. So what is the main difference? Well, what I'll do is I'll show you the actual stencils that these two machines make, and you can decide from there. So for the brother, this is how the stencil tape comes out. Um, I will do a close up to, to try and show you this more clearly, but it's basically an extremely thin, gossamer thin actually, um, piece of paper um, that you will place like this onto your piece and uh, etch. And we will do that a bit later. Now for the brother, uh, no, 
And now for the cricket, um, this is how it comes out. Uh, this is the vinyl. This side of it is removable so that it's adhesive. And it has cut out enormously accurately the numbers of this date that I'm going to etch on someone's knife for their birthday. Uh, what you do is you then pick out the outlines with a special tool, which is to pick really, and then you have to make sure that the the black marks in the center of the O, the 4 and the 8, for example, stays there. And then you put a layer of vinyl, of no, of um, adhesive, transparent adhesive tape over the top so that when you actually stick it onto the blade, those center pieces stay on. You then remove this adhesive tape and then you can etch through it. But again, that will become more obvious uh, when I do it. Now, the obvious difference is that with this tape, I can only stick down the edges. I put, uh, I put masking tape around the edges to hold it down, but that will not keep it absolutely flat. And one of the big problems with that, of course, is that they will be bleeding, so the edges aren't as clean. With this one, if I do it properly, the whole thing sticks down, including the little pieces in the, in the middle of the, the numbers. And so I'm likely to get a much cleaner edge, an etch. And so, although I will tape around here to protect the rest of the blade, that is likely to bleed out much more. And also the other thing is this one tends to burn if you're the ampage of your etching power source is too high. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and do a comparative test on a piece of um, blade steel and I'll show you what the difference is. You'll see that I've masked off the the stencil with frog tape uh, making sure that it's as flat as possible um, but obviously there is a limit to how flat um, it can be. I'm going to do the other one separately so that I can use a clean cottonwood pad for each one to try and make sure that we have similar processes. Okay, so this is how I've been doing it. I take quite a big bolt, I think it's probably an M10, M12, and I, I grind the top flat, um, because as you know, these bolts have a, um, a sort of a strength indicator here, or tolerance, which is just going to leave marks. old-fashioned rubber band yeah it's not very satisfactory and the negative attaches to the bolt this is a solution of salt water it's basically it's very salty. It's the, I have no idea what the actual measurements I should be using, but the way I do it is, as long as it's a lot saltier than I would ever want to put in my mouth, I think it's going to do. And this is actually the bit that's going to etch the steel. Switch on my power supply, which is not working. So that was, I don't know what was going on there. It was working fine. So basically I dip the cotton wool into this saline solution. You don't want it to be too wet because otherwise it's going to go everywhere and the salt water is going to basically mess everything up. And to keep this even, I'm going to use a timer. And I'm going to do it for one minute. There.
Okay, so there you can see it. Um, it is certainly etched. You always have to use something to clean it up. Okay, now, if you can see, it's pretty good, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that actually. Um, but you'll see there is some spots and bits where the saline solution does actually trickle through the paper. And I mean, I have to confess this is one of the best ones I've done. Um, so I'm not too unhappy with it, but next we're going to try the, the vinyl. Okay, that's one minute. The reason I covered the blade again here is uh, so that the vinyl is stuck. You don't want the salt solution to get onto other parts of the blade. So that would be sad. Right, I, I hope you can see this difference. Um, they both edged really well and, and the light makes it very difficult. Um, I could probably add a bit more black um, inside it if I wanted with some clockmaker's black or dial maker's black. The etching is similar quality. I think I had more water on this one. It's, it's very nicely defined. But what this one hasn't got is all this speckling around. Now, you can sand that off but some of it sometimes is too deep and it gives it a sort of messy appearance. Whereas this one, there is none of that. There is literally zero speckling. So it's very, very clean. Um, so that's the basic difference between the two. And having said that, that is by far the best results I've ever had on the, um, the transfer tape. Okay, so as I said, this is not an exhaustive test, all right? It's really to give you a sense of whether you want to spend the extra money on a, a, a vinyl cutter or whether you're happy with the results I showed you with the brother. The other thing I would say, okay, there are a couple of things I want to say. The result on the brother was not bad, as you saw, but it's taken me a lot of practice to get to that, okay? And um, that is the best I've ever managed it, so it does... With practice, clearly you can get the right results. And they involve the difference between how much you saturate the cotton wool, um, how long you leave it, the amount of pressure you put on. So there's loads of things involved here because ultimately that transfer paper will kind of disintegrate under too much heat, which it didn't that time because I made sure I only put it on for one minute. With the vinyl, that does not happen or certainly not anywhere near the same extent. All right, so that's worth bearing in mind. And I think you, 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 you get to the right result quicker with the vinyl. That's my opinion, okay? The other thing is this machine can do so much more, okay? If you want to do T-shirt transfers, mugs, all kinds of stuff, 
um, it's not my bag, but it is a big deal that this machine can do an extraordinary amount of stuff and just maybe go and look at their website. So it's a personal choice and it's a budget choice. Um, so there you have it and I hope that's been useful to some people. I will link in this video to a, a video where I use the brother in anger, so to speak, where I was making a touch mark. But anyway, thanks so much for, for watching and if you enjoyed it as usual, please subscribe, please like, please leave me a comment. Thank you so much.